Hello, in this video we're going to talk about the meniscus, specifically the menisci found in the knee joints. So we'll first look at the right knee from an anterior view. The knee is made up of three bones, the femur, the tibia, and the patella. On the surface of the ends of the bones, we can find articular cartilage, which are shiny cartilages that protects the bone ends from damage. You have many ligaments supporting the bone as well, the joint. But also here in blue, we have the lateral and medial menisci. The ligaments on the lateral side is the lateral collateral ligament and the ligament on the medial side is the medial collateral ligament. Here is a transverse ligament which joins the two anterior parts of the menisci with each other and supposedly prevents the meniscus from moving forward. Let us now focus on the menisci and look at the meniscus of the right knee joint from a superior view, so from the top. Remember that the meniscus sits on the tibial bone. To orientate ourselves here, here is the medial meniscus. It is C-shaped. Lateral meniscus is more of an O-shaped. Here is the fibula bone at the posterior lateral part of the tibia. And again, here is your transverse ligament, connecting the anterior horns or anterior parts of the meniscus. There are two other important ligaments inside the knee joint that help stabilize the knee. They are named according to where they attach on the tibial bone. The ACL ligament, or the anterior cruciate ligament, joins to the anterior part of the tibia, and the PCL, the posterior cruciate ligament, joins at the posterior part of the tibia. So let's look at, uh, again, the superior view of the tibial bone. So looking from the top. Now to orientate ourselves, here again you have your lateral meniscus, then you have your fibula, the head of the fibula here, then you have your medial meniscus, again your inner cruciate ligaments, your ACL connecting to the anterior part of the tibia, and then you have your PCL, your posterior cruciate ligament, attaching to the posterior part of the tibia. Now, in some people, there is presence of another ligament at the back coming off the posterior aspect of the lateral meniscus, known as the posterior meniscofemoral ligament. And you either have an anterior or posterior, but these ligaments essentially help the posterior cruciate ligament. It is known to help it. Then again, here is the front, of course, and here is where you have the patella ligament, which will eventually attach to the tibial tuberosity. The medial collateral ligament is quite important because it has a deep and superficial layer. The deep part of the medial collateral ligament joins actually with the medial meniscus. This means that injury to the medial collateral ligament can cause medial meniscal injury as well. The lateral collateral ligament here joins to the head of the fibula. Finally, another important fascia that runs down and joins to the anterior lateral part of the tibia is the iliotibial band. Now let us talk about the function of the meniscus. And there are four main functions. One, it absorbs shock, so it's a shock absorber. Two, it allows for increased congruency between joint surfaces. Three, it enhances joint stability. And four, it aids in the distribution of the synovial fluid. But remember two things if you can. One is that the meniscus is a shock absorber, and two, it, it helps in joint stability. Clinical significance. There's something called the unhappy triad or the O'Donoghue triad. And this is a serious injury coming from the lateral part of the knee joint with the knee twisting. And this can cause what is known as the unhappy triad. The unhappy triad consists of a medial collateral ligament tear, which will then tear the medial meniscus. And will also the injury will also result in an anterior cruciate ligament tear. This is an indication for surgery. Finally, again drawing the same image looking at the right tibia from the superior view, we can see the menisci again. 
The menisci can be divided into three sections. The anterior part are the anterior horns. The anterior horns are connected by the transverse ligament. But this is only seen, sorry, in some people, not all. Then you have the posterior horns at the back. It's also important to remember that compared to the lateral meniscus, the medial meniscus is firmly attached to the tibia and it's not very mobile. Thus, it is easily torn. The lateral meniscus, on the other hand, is slightly more mobile because the posterior horns of the lateral meniscus does not attach firmly onto the tibia. Finally, we can further divide the lateral and medial meniscus into the peripheral third. So the outside edge is the peripheral third. Then we have the middle third and we have the inner third. The peripheral third is also known as the red red zone. It is called the red red zone because it has blood supply, branches of the geniculate arteries. Thus, damage to the peripheral meniscus is repairable. The inner third is the white, white zone. This is an avascular zone. There is no blood supply, and so it is unrepairable if damaged. Let's now look at the meniscus from a different view. Let's, let's cut a slice of the meniscus from the side and look at it from that angle. Here again is your peripheral third, the red, red zone. The middle third is called the red-white zone, and the inner third is the white-white zone. The red-white zone and the white-white zone is classified as, as avascular. Damage to this part of the meniscus means that repairing it is meaningless, and so removal would be the best option if patients are symptomatic. Um, what I mean by this is if the damage causes pain. So clinical re relevance of the meniscus, well, meniscal tears are very common. It can occur in healthy, young, active adolescents or in adults and the elderly. So we can say meniscal tears can either be acute or degenerative. Acute meniscal tears are usually bucket handle tears from longitudinal tears. Degenerative meniscal tears are from old age and is due to wear and tear with accompanying osteoarthritis. It is a complex type of tear which may involve other things. These injuries can present with the sensation of catching or the knees locking. Knee locking is essentially where the torn meniscus, if it is big enough, it can get caught between the tibia and the femur bone essentially. And this is known as the locking sensation or the knees catching. I hope you enjoyed this video on the clinical anatomy of the knee meniscus. Thank you.